Yesterday, Apple announced three new Macs, all seemingly running the same M1 chip, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13, and the new Mac Mini. Apple made some bold claims about the performance and showed a bunch of different graphs, but are they really the same chip? Is the MacBook Pro going to be faster than the Air? Hey, I'm Jerry, and the M1 looks amazing. It looks like it's gonna be a great start to the first line of Apple Silicon Macs. One of the first questions I had is, are they really the same processor? On the specs pages for all three of these computers, but let's stick more with just the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 13, the specs say M1 processor. They don't show anything about the speed or the specific wattage. But if you scroll around the webpage and look at the graphs, you'll see performance arcs that far exceed that of Intel processors. Although it doesn't say what Intel processor, how old, what types of computers, blah, blah, blah. It just shows that, hey, we're gonna be better than the other guys. And at first glance, there's not a lot of difference between the base MacBook Air and the base 13 inch MacBook Pro. They both have the M1 chip. They both have eight gigabytes of memory. They both have 256 gigabytes of storage. The only difference that you can see from the specs is that the MacBook Air has seven GPU cores versus the eight GPU cores on the MacBook Pro. Then of course you get into things like the touch bar and the slightly better screen, but is that worth a $300 difference if they both have the same processor and memory? Apple pointed out that the MacBook Air has no fan, which sounds amazing, just like my iPad Pro over here that has no fan and is super powerful. I expect that the MacBook Air will be the same. If you look at the charts that show the M1 performance, you can see that Apple specifically calls out the 10 watt performance. It shows that the Apple Silicon M1 performs at twice the speed of an existing Intel chip. But then I found this sentence. At just 10 watts, the thermal envelope of the MacBook Air, M1 delivers up to two times the CPU performance of the PC chip. So obviously looking at the graph, the performance goes much above 10 watts on the M1. So is the MacBook Air going to be limited to 10 watts, whereas the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini with active cooling will not be? That's the assumption that I'm able to draw from this information on Apple's website. And just looking at this graph with no measuring tools, it looks like it's possible that the MacBook Pro could be 50% faster than the MacBook Air. Now there's no way to tell just yet until reviewers get it and start doing performance tests. I'll be getting a MacBook Pro and a MacBook Air next week, so I'm excited to really test this out. But I'm thinking based on that information that the MacBook Pro is gonna be quite a bit faster than the MacBook Air. Another thing about the new M1 chips that struck me is the unified memory. We have not been able to add third-party memory to Mac portables for a while now, and that's understandable, but you can still add memory to iMacs and Mac Pros. The new Apple Silicon chips have the memory built right into the chip itself. The M1 SoC combines processor, IO, security, and memory. I guess this will make the memory faster and introduce less latency, which would be good for overall performance. And that sounds good, except for the fact that you absolutely have to pay Apple's memory prices, which is pretty steep. To go from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes is $200. That's $200 for eight gigabytes of memory. That is steep. And it's disappointing that a pro level computer gets a maximum of 16 gigabytes of memory and starts at eight. But a comment on the channel last night raised a very good point. If the iPad Pros from 2020 have six gigabytes of memory and nobody says that these things are slow, sluggish, or can't do what they need to do, then maybe it's possible that the Apple Silicon Max and the M1 can perform far better with less memory than we're used to with Intel chips. Nobody does memory optimization better than Apple with iOS hardware and iOS software. Apple's also been making a big deal about how macOS Big Sur has been optimized for Apple Silicon and the M1 chips. So is it possible that the optimization from iOS devices has been brought to the Mac? And if so, does eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes really matter as much as they used to? I don't know, time will tell. But the next question is going to be, what about the iMac and the Mac Pro? There's no way you can get a terabyte and a half of memory on one of these tiny little five nanometer chips. So I'm sure there's going to have to be other designs that allow for external memory. And so maybe the hope is still alive for iMacs to be able to add third party memory. One last thing I wanted to talk about with the new M1 chips is that I was disappointed that there's no cellular options. I thought for sure by adding Apple's own chips, Apple's own silicon into the Macs, we would now have cellular options for a MacBook and we did not see it. So I guess I'll be holding on to my iPad Pro a bit longer for my truly mobile computing device. And I really hope that we start seeing cellular capable Macs in the future. Anyway, that's my video on the M1 chip and my initial thoughts after yesterday's announcements. Be sure to hit subscribe so you can see my videos comparing these MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs starting next week. Hit thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you next time.